for the zombie fish. Welcome to Rotten Book Review. My name is Jamie. And this book is called Ghost Stories. Not exactly the most original of titles, but that is because this is a group of selected writings from Edward Frederick Benson, who was a British horror writer around the turn of the 20th century. This particular compilation was devised by horror aficionado, former star of the BBC comedy series The League of Gentlemen, and one of the current driving forces behind the latest TV adaptation of Dracula, Mr. Mark Gattis. There are only nine stories in this collection, which I actually prefer. When you get those huge anthologies, you've inevitably got quite a lot of stories that don't really resonate with you. When you cut back and just provide the ones that you feel are really worthy of being published, then I feel it makes for a better product. Mr. Benson wrote his horror stories around the same time as renowned English horror writer M.R. James. And in the introduction of this book, it actually says that Mr. Benson may have been present for one of M.R. James's classic ghost story readings way back when in King's College. And there is undoubtedly something familiar in Benson's writing when compared with M.R. James's. They have this certain antiquated flavour. But while James's stories were more focused on solitary, academically driven figures who wandered into some rural cathedral and found something they didn't want, Benson's stories have characters who talk. There's more dialogue about the possibilities of the other side, finding spectres, and what the consequences may be if they manage to make contact. Of the nine stories, my three favourite would have to be Mrs. Amsworth, a really well done little vampire tale. The Room in the Tower, very trippy, very disorientating tale, and I actually think that is Mark Gattis's favourite of the bunch. And the awesomely titled The Man Who Went Too Far, which while had some good spooks as well, I was mostly bowled over by just the sheer quality of the writing. Abbreviating through text or internet slang are probably some of the culprits, but it's no secret that the manner in which people write and speak has degraded over the years. So when you read somebody like this, who can so crisply outline vistas or beautifully detail those creepy moments, you have to smile at that effortless eloquence. The Bus Conductor, which is one of the nine tales, was also adapted in a classic British horror film, an anthology called Dead of Night. Made in the 1940s, if you don't mind your black and white films, check it out. The last three entries in this collection aren't particularly great, a little bit forgettable, though the quality of the writing still makes them enjoyable while they last. It could be because I'm not well read enough, or more likely it could be for the simple fact they shared an era. But when I compare Benson to the towering legacy of M.R. James, he comes off second best simply for the fact that that traditional dusty type of horror M.R. James gave us, I felt was just more effective. You get that good horror hit when things go bump in the night. But to Benton's credit, it's probably a more intellectual brand of horror. And that is not to say that when he gets creepy, there were some moments that had me smiling. Because these stories were very good and it was only selected writings, I am definitely going to check out more E.F. Benson. I will have to give this collection a very solid four fish out of five.